Hello folks, well still no laptop so I'm still filming on my phone and that sun's blazing in my eyes, it's red hot today, in fact my phone's just had a warning, I've just been doing some filming there which I've lost because I've been doing, I can only do it in a one of these, uh, these videos at the moment because I don't have my laptop, but it was saying that the phone's overheated or overheating or something, it switched itself off, switched the video off. So I'm hoping we're going to be all right. It's facing me now, the screen is facing me, which means when I turn it round, I won't be able to see what you're seeing. So I'm hoping I can just uh, hold the phone straight and capture what we want to capture. All right, but we'll see. I'll just pause you. In fact, I can't. I'll mess it up there. I'll show you what we're up to. Lee Wazzer it was, the guy who's... Uh, Hopefully going to be able to assist us. Oh, bloody ridiculous. Hopefully going to be able to assist us with our laptop issue. And then I'll be able to do the editing and stuff like that. Then again, we'll be back to normal. Or as normal as I get. What I'm doing is I'm planting the cucumbers. Market more 76 cucumbers we're planting in. And as you can see, they're nowhere near as far along as the ones that we did plant in about two weeks ago. They were sown as seeds at exactly the same time, these. But, uh, yeah, they're nowhere near as far along. All I've done is I've excavated a hole to put them in. I hope you can see this all right, guys. And then there's a mound at the side of it. And in that mound, there's the ground-up eggshells that we get. Just eggshells that we dry off in the oven on a low temperature for about 15 minutes just to get rid of all the nasties like salmonella. Give them a wash first. And then, um, yeah, we put a tray of them out, say, about... 40 eggshells out on a tray, baking tray, in the oven for about 15 minutes on gas mark 3. Just a relatively low heat. Uh, until they kind of bake a little bit and it gets rid of any bugs and what have you. In the form of salmonella and whatnot That might be knocking about on the shelves. But these are the market more. The market more 76. And I'm putting three in. I've already put two in. Like I say, I filmed it, but you'll, not, you'll never see that. Because... Uh, I can only shoot it in a one-off, on a one -off. Get the camera work on that, hey? Brilliant. Brilliantly crap. There's nothing else I can do about it at the moment until we get the laptop sorted out. So what I'll do is I'll pause this now, and then we'll uh, we'll take a look at them all, all in. I'll put the in-ground water, in ground watering system in there as well. So we've got the eggshells. I never finished that, did I? Eggshells, we've got sulphate of potash, in there, so ground up eggshells, sulphate of potash, and blood fish and bone. Yeah, there's a bit of nitrogen in there. Mm. Potash, calcium in the eggshells. This will all help, it'll all help to do bits and bobs of this and that for the plants. Yeah, calcium helps to uh, helps with the cellular side of things. Uh, the, the plant cells and it helps to draw nutrients up from the ground and the sulfate of potash will help with the fruiting because cucumbers are obviously a fruit if you didn't know that they are a fruit so you want some of that you want some potash in there and uh, and the nitrogen will come it'll be coming from uh, well nitrogen phosphorus and potassium really are going to be coming from the blood fish and bone but it's the nitrogen that helps with the um Sort of photosynthesis, photosynthesis, and the greening of the leaves, and the health of the of the leaf growth, which of, of course pulls the sun and feeds the plant. So hopefully we'll be doing all the right things there for those cucumbers. All right, so I'll pause you, and we'll have another look. I don't know if you can see that, but they're getting root bound. These, yeah, the roots have spread through the the pot, looking for nutrition. A little bit damp, a little bit damp back to compost as well. I should have took it out of the water a couple of times, I think, but never mind. Uh, but we are getting the root growth. That needs to spread its wings. It's not finding the nutrient that it needs, the nutrients, nutrition that it needs. Because that's sort of pretty much sterile soil, that. There's nothing in it, more or less, um, to feed the plant. So we're getting this kind of yellowing effect on the leaves. All right, so they're going to be going in the ground now. I'm having to be quite inventive doing it this way. This is a plastic pot bottle. Okay, now you can see, hopefully, that I've got some holes in it. 
cut the base off there's like a natural uh, on those plastic pop bottles there's like a natural uh, indentation around where the base is so you you carefully trim that off what I what I use is I use uh, with you'll see it on the videos actually I'll show it you um, next time us doing these hopefully and you trim off and you, you cut the base off basically scissors and a craft knife cut the base off get um, a little uh, a little drill I think these are like a five millimeter or six millimeter drill and you drill little holes in I don't even think the six millimeters probably about we have five millimeter little holes in and you put them a couple couple of inches up four inches up that's what we do and then in between the plants you'll see when I show you in a minute in between the plants we dig a little hole for them and you bob them in to a depth so that the holes are below ground level Just, uh, a bit of soil around that. Like the holes are below ground level. It's tricky as anything, this guy's tricky as anything because it's in its little hole, it's a little hole slipping. Uh, right now, you can see that, can't you? Hopefully, yeah. But in the ground. So weird doing it this way, guys. Get that laptop fixed quick, Tony. You can help us out, though, Lee. You'll be a me you'll be a mega star. I tried to get hold of you today, but I couldn't because I've not got. I can't get your uh, email address off your um, off your YouTube site because it won't come up on my phone. It'll come up on the laptop, but obviously the laptop's not working. <laughs> I've left a message for you anyway on one of yours. So that goes in the ground there, and then uh, it gets filled up with water. So we fill it up with water, pop that in, and the, the reason that we've got this little pot in the top, yeah, hope you can see this. Reason that we've got this little pot in the top, back it up a little bit, is so if a if a bumblebee falls in, he doesn't drown in the water, or she doesn't drown in the water. I better get one for the other one. There's another one I've done up there. Look. So I've got one, two, three, four of the watering uh, stations, and there's three cucumber plants in there. So three cucumber plants and four watering stations. And so all we do is, oh, and this will be done on a probably daily basis going forward, depending on weather conditions. Is first of all with this can, which is a seven litre watering can, I'll give them the initial watering in around the base so that the growing medium with the nutrition gets washed down to where the roots are. And seats the plant. I hope you can see this guys. Otherwise, I'm just wasting my flaming time. Aren't I? So that gets a, a decent watering in with that one, and then with the other one. This is just initially the watering around it like that. That's an initial one just to seat it in. We don't tend to do that from this point onwards because we're filling up these then. We fill these up, and this is a 10 litre watering can. fill them up to the brim and it's going to get consistent water into the soil consistent moisture below ground level where it's more difficult for it to evaporate inside a polytunnel like this because that is a problem when it's surface watered it doesn't get down deep enough and it will evaporate you want it below ground level really your water so the roots seek it out and it can pull it, the plant will pull it, whatever it needs will be pulled out from the subterranean moisture in the soil.
and what that'll do with all the holes that are in the bottle it'll seep out so the water will seep see how it's going down that's because the holes are releasing the water below ground level and it's going to seep and I'll be doing that every day more or less just topping it up checking the moisture levels I've got a moisture meter we don't want it wet we want it in that sweet spot a sort of damp spot but at this stage we're just getting the water in the ground because that um, that bed is quite dry really it's as dry as a bone so I'm going to be giving it two lots of that so altogether that bed will have had 20 litres plus the 7 litres from that 27 litres and then I'll keep on doing that until I'm happy with it not an exact science now I don't know how much of that you caught on camera <laughs> Or on telephone, but I hope it was. Uh, I hope it was interesting for you. But I do like those. I do like those in-ground waters. It stops you getting uh, too much dampness as well as well around the around the stems and onto the leaves. Because inside a hot, moist environment like a greenhouse, <coughs> you don't want it to be too humid for most plants. They don't really like it. Those fruiting ones, I mean, you can grow market more 76 outside if you're in a, a slightly better climate. They'll grow perfectly well. If you get a good summer up, up in the north here where we are, you'll be okay. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit... You can get sort of funguses and moulds molds forming, which you don't want if you're not getting that aeration coming through and if you've got, you've got too much dampness on your leaves and on your stems and things like that, it's a, it's a habitat. You get blights and whatnot. So, so watering below ground level is better. I mean, people do it in the, in the tomato halos. You've got the, um, you know, the big um, watering trays that you can get, which, we, which, which we've got these in. You can do it in those, but you're, you're constantly topping them up and um, you're topping them up with the water all the time when you do it that way but that way with it being in the ground um i, I find it better you don't have to once you're established and it's and it's a reasonable level of moisture within that soil you don't have to do it all the time you can do it like once every three days but as long as you're consistent with it and you're checking the weather if it's really really hot obviously you're going to be doing it a little bit more than if it's cooler and not as sunny um, but yeah, it's, as I say, it's not really an exact science, but uh, if, you get, if you have some sort of system to it, then it's always better. So uh, yeah, when it's, when it's in cool conditions, and we're not, I'll be checking it with a moisture meter, but when it's uh, cool conditions, this is a moisture meter. Okay. And where we want it to be is in that sort of mid-moist level, mid-moist range. We don't want it, be, want it to be wet, we don't want it to be dry, we want it to be in that mid-moisture range. So we'll be checking that. But we'll let, let it settle out. It's going to get another 10 litres. And then we'll let it settle out. And then I'll be checking the moisture, le moisture levels um, later on this evening, probably in about half an hour. And um, around where the base is of the plant, trying to avoid the, um, the roots. I'm rambling a little bit here, but... Um, I hope you get the message on that. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it in that moist state, not overly wet, not dry, and we'll try and keep that consistent. We're going to be watering a little bit more, keeping an eye on it once the fruit's set and the plant's bigger, uh, because it, it'll be wanting to draw up more moisture at that stage. And when the fruit's set, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to underdo it. You want to keep it in that moist, that moist, moist. I'm gonna stop saying stop. I can't speak with this flaming tooth. In. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, stay stay beautiful, and uh, I'll catch you later on. You wonderful, vibrant, and what have you. If you're if you're a girl and if you're a bloke, I hope you're doing all right. You are masculine, virile, and forthright. I can't think at the moment. It's far to what inside these. I don't know what temperature it is, but it's hot. In fact, I'll have a look now. I'll have a quick look now while you're here. 36 degrees it is and I'm not used to it it's really warm today and that's inside the big one I bet it's hotter still inside that right okay take care of yourselves and each other
I'll see you tomorrow and God bless. All right, boys and girls, take it easy. Have a good one.